Tammy isn't just a real estate guru. She always puts her heart and soul into the communities she serves. And over the past 14 years, Tammy has donated $1.54 million, donated $1.54 million for uplifting underserved areas of Venice and West Los Angeles. In exercising her passion for others, Tammy established the Life Change Warriors Foundation. She's going to share a little bit about that shortly. Allowing people from all walks of life to face their fears, set goals, and have a plan for achieving their dreams. Tammy is a long-term resident of Venice, where she lives with her life and business partner, John Moose, and their blended family of six children. A real day, modern day Brady Bunch. So I'd like to welcome Tammy Pardee onto the stage. Check out the angel wings. <laughs> surreal for me to sit here with you and thank you so much for doing this and taking time out of your day. So I wanted to start with your passion project, Life Change Warriors. Tell us all about that. Okay. So um, I'm, like, I'm going to look at you, right? Kind of back and forth here. Um, so what I realized and I have for a long time is in real estate is, is that I help people start in a life that they love through real estate. But the reality of the world is, if we were all starring in the light that we, we love, and we live in Los Angeles, how did we do that? So um, what I did is we have a big homeless issue, you know, not issue, but situation, I should say, in Venice. And we were buying pizzas for them, and we were buying you know, showers and all of that. And what I realized is, is that they actually need to learn to fish. So my friend and I created a 16-hour 16, 16 coaching program for them. It's a, program that goes over the past, present, and future, and helps them create a game plan to move through the homelessness. But you can only move through things if you deal with your hurts and your traumas of what you started in the beginning of life. If anyone's ever done any work in your or therapy, I'm sure they know that. So we created this program. Um, we teach it to underserved um, kids um, at Venice Arts and through Harvest Home, which is for pregnant homeless women. And we've launched, um, we've had four sessions so far, and we've launched all these, um, have had these amazing stories of launching these women and homeless and at risk youth. What motivated you to get started down that path? Because you could have kept on the trajectory of doing 90, no, I'm sorry, $900 million in one year. $900 million is, how did you get off of that path and then go into this one? Um, what got on the path about a while ago is because I, I mean, this is probably too personal, but whatever, I guess this is it's a big too room. Small. So yeah, I'm like talking to you, like on my couch. <laughs> you can work, okay. Yeah, we'll look at you. <laughs> Don't watch me. Yeah, I won't even look at them. Um, when I, oh God, okay. Um, so when I was about 40 years old, 44 years old, my life fell apart. <clears throat> and, um, I had four kids and I decided that I had to, I actually a dog bit me in the eye and I almost lost my eyesight. And when that dog bit me, um, it was the best thing that ever happened to me because it actually changed my life. It was like God was talking to me and saying, you need to wake up because it's not all about real estate. It's not all about winning. It's not all about that. So what I did is I started doing a lot of work on myself and I went into myself. I did Hoffman. I did, I mean, I can let you guys on. I did a lot of psychedelic work, journey work. I did a lot of, um, I did therapy. I did, although therapy for me wasn't as effective. I just wanted to get to like who I was because I wasn't in my body. I was spinning, you know? And I was really good at what I did because I would control things. I knew what to do. I was like boom, boom, boom. But I was also nicknamed at the time Tiger, which my dad nicknamed as me as a kid. But what I realize now is I'm not really a tiger. I'm more of a daisy and a cupcake. Can you show us? So yeah, the tiger tattoo here. But, um, but I do have a tiger by my side at all times, I feel very regal. Tigers can be fierce, but they can also be regal. They can also be cuddly, right? So um, when I did all this work, 
and I got back in my body and I felt like myself. Like I literally feel like I'm myself. Like when I look at people, I'm like, I'm, I know who I am. I'm, I'm really myself, which is really like a five-year-old kind of thing, if that makes any sense. Totally. So when I did all this work and I was looking at all these homeless situations, everyone's like, what do we do? Do we give them pizza? And I'm like, no, they have to be seen. They have to be heard. They have to know that there's a way out and that they're worthy of that. And I spent a lot of money on doing what I did, like all my work. And I thought, huh, the trajectory of these people that have nobody that sees them and that can hold space for them and can hear their story in circle, we do it in circle, I can make a difference of those people so much faster than I can in anyone else's life. And that is, that's been proven true in the program. So that is my passion project. I am working on that a lot. I'm still in real estate and I'm still doing all of that. I can talk to you all about real estate, give you their five, 10 hints that everybody wants to hear, I know. But the reality is, is that Life Change Warrior, when you teach it to regular, regular people as well, um, you have to go through who you are and what you want to be and where you're going in order to live your best life and start the life you live. Because it doesn't matter how many houses you sell. If you're not happy on the, on the, in the inside, then who cares? Who really cares, you know? So, and that's what actually what happened. I wasn't happy. I was like, I didn't even like myself. Now I like absolutely, I mean, I like myself. I, I'm so much better. I love you too. And I, and I talk to myself, I'm like my own best friend. <laughs> I'm like, oh, well. Thank God for those, you know, the headphones. I love those now because I'm like, people must start off talking to myself. They think I'm like talking to somebody else. <laughs> I was so entertaining. One day she sits there and she tells me, I walk to the beach and I just talk to myself. I'm like, but do you argue with yourself? And she's like, no, no, no. She's like, I just process. And I thought, yeah. that's so freeing to yeah. be able to have that level of comfort with yourself yeah. and to not care the, what the world thinks. It's, it's just a well, beautiful place. Actually, it's inspiring for people because it's your, your, your own best friend. They say to take care of yourself first. When you're like, let's, well, bring this back to real estate because I know that's why you guys are all here, but like. They have because, a whole day of that. This because, I, because I know who I am. And if I'm with somebody and they're like treating me badly or something, I'm like, no one's gonna treat my best friend like that. Like, no, and I'll, I'll stop them and be like, hey, we're not gonna talk to me like that. We're not gonna be in that kind of relationship. So we're gonna sleep on this and we're gonna pick up tomorrow morning. And if they can't, if they're abusive, and I actually, it doesn't really happen anymore to me, but if they are, I, I'm good. Like, I'm, not, I'm gonna protect myself because I know that that's the most important thing. That's beautiful. Well, I'll bring it back to real estate because I'm sure you want a little bit of that too, but I wanted you guys to really see what an incredible human being this is, not just in the real estate community, not just in what she gives back, um, but who she is as a person. So thank you for that. Um, okay. yeah, thank you. Thank you. Um, where do you see the industry in the next, let's just say three years? It's interesting. I mean, there's a lot going on. And I know you're going to talk about all the, the things, so I'm not going to get into details about it. But, but we were talking to our team about this, actually, and yesterday, actually. And there's a lot of volatility in the market. I mean, it seems like everything is up and down right now. It's like the interest rates, and then the bank failing, and then this, and then that. So there's so many different things going. So it's really, if you want to survive in this climate, and really, it's forever in real estate, it's really about the connections that you have with your clients and the trust that you build. And you build the trust through knowledge, through experience, through communication. And um, like it was interesting yesterday, I will give you a tidbit that I did yesterday that we're gonna actually start using is, I talked to a client, they were working with another agent before us and they didn't like the communication with that agent, so they said, this is really important to me. So I picked up the phone yesterday, we don't have an offer or anything, and I just said, hey, I wanted to check in with you and tell you where everything is, so I did, and I said, I also want to ask you, how is the communication? Is there something I can do better? And he, <laughs> he's actually an agent in New York that is on the for, and he was like, wow, I've never heard anyone ask me that. And it was like a mic drop for him, and it was very like, I see you, I hear you, I'm on your team, and what can I do? What can I do better? Is there anything I can do better? I want to do the best that I can for you. And it changes the relationship. You know, it reminds me of a day that I heard you speak, I think it was about 
seven or eight years ago. It was actually the Steve Schull panel. And you had mentioned that, you had touched on it, and I wanted you to expand on it, which was uh, about getting to the truth as quickly as possible when you're entering someone's living room or space. And the other one was how we appear as professionals, from how we dress to how we sit. Can you talk about the mirror? Do you remember that conversation? Well, Can you expand on that? It's funny, because I do it naturally right now. If you look at how we're sitting, I mirrored exactly Vivian on how she's sitting. <laughs> um, so I'll talk about the mirroring and the and the like the way I approach things. So people normally like themselves, and so when I go into a listing, I always want to know who they are. So I try to research as much as I can on who they are, what they wear, what they look like, who their friends are, you know, anything that I can find. And now it's great because you can find out a lot about a person, right? So when I when I do that, and I also look at do they have kids? What you know? What 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 is this? It's, what where are we at with this? And then I try to like if they're a rocker, I will look like a rocker going in. If they're an older couple that seems very conservative, I will look very conservative going in. I mean, my wardrobe is like I look like I'm. Uh, it looks like a movie set of all ages and things. <laughs> But I like that because then out of just that, like you're relating, I always take off my shoes. I don't care, I mean, well, unless sometimes people, like unless there's like nails or something, you know, obviously construction site, but always take off my shoes, um, always introduce my, obviously shake hands and introduce myself. And then I mirror them, like when I'm sitting with them, you know, and I also match their tone. So if they're, I mean, I don't like when they're, sometimes people are very aggressive and they talk like this, you are know, like, oh, we okay, got it, you know, or if they're talking fast, they're fast talking, then I, I talk fast. If they are talking slow, I talk slow. So I just make sure that like, because that builds trust, right? So once you build trust, because they like, oh, they're like me, I like them, I can listen to them, they're not, you know, they're actually paying attention, also paying attention to what they're actually saying. If there's nothing that drives me crazier is you say something and then somebody takes a completely different takeaway. So we always like repeat, okay, so this is what I heard you say. Okay, cool, that sounds good, yes. So that we're, I'm getting the buy-in as I'm going along. Great. Um, my next question. What would be one two, or two sources of inspiration that you pull from? Whether it's a podcast, a book, um, a networking event, where do you go to plug in? So it's interesting because you, and I was telling you, when you said that, I was like, I, I don't have one source. And I think that, that I do this with my kids, and this is another, I'm gonna give you, I'm trying to give you guys tidbits of things because that's really what you like. So I, um, I learned this from somebody actually in Manhattan Beach, and it's called the Green Light Day, or Green Light. I, I apply it to almost everything at this point, to be honest with you. So when I, find something that I find is interesting. I, it's like a green light. Oh, like my dad passed away a few months ago and my friend brought me a science book, the book on science, and if someone ever passes away in your life, or before, if they are, I would highly recommend that book. So I read that, and then from that book, there were references to other things in that book that I found interesting, so then I went in there and I read that. So, and then from that, there was a lot about, for me, um, poetry, which I never thought I was a poetry reader, but I, Allie Webb, who the founder of Thrift Drive Bar is a friend of mine, and her husband was talking about this book, Atticus, which is this beautiful poetry book on love stories. And like, I started reading that with my love, like, which I never thought we would do, but we do. And it's just like, what feels good to you? What is your green light? So I just do that. I felt like, I mean, I'm, I'm listening to the Flexible Neurotic, who's a friend of mine, who I, she's talking about this weird, this is a crazy name, it's called spermidine, it's like this new, it's like a wheat germ thing. And so I was like interested in that, so it's in that. So I think that whatever you're interested in, you follow it, you know, because I, it's not one size fits all. I mean, if I were looking at my business books, um, The Power of Ted is an amazing, if you're caught, The Power of Ted is a great book, if you just want like a tidbit. It's very easy to read. It's about the drama triangle. If you're caught in the drama triangle with your clients, you definitely want to get out of that. Um, so I would definitely read that book. I mean, Good to Great by Jim Collins. You know, I really get in the right people on your bus. Like I've, I've read a lot of a lot of business books in my in my, in my master's in business. I, I I've done all of that. But the reality is, is this is a life experience that we're in selling real estate. So you really need to figure out 
who you are in order to show up because what people want and trust is someone that's grounded and can is is like there and can help help them navigate a difficult process because normally when they're selling it they're not grounded so you need to be the grounding force in real estate i i saw you do that in that listing appointment we went on and it was interesting how the seller was a little bit okay. and <laughs> we'll keep it nice but um it was a talent that you have to be able to turn on did I turn it off somehow? Uh, it was really a, an amazing art to watch you take control of the situation that was a little bit chaotic. And I, I just watched you, how you sat, and, and you did this whole hand thing. Yeah. What was that about? Well, we teach that in Life Change Warrior. Um, just like really like I, I settle, it's a co-regulation. So a lot of people when they're selling a house aren't regulated. Mm -hmm what this is. Does anyone know code regulation? Okay, regulation is, is when you're calm in your body and you feel grounded, basically, okay? And if two people, like when I came in and you were a little nervous, if I was nervous too, sorry, she was just a little nervous. That's a little bit If nervous. I came in and was like, oh my God, I'm nervous too. What are we gonna do? <laughs> we would've been spinning around this room. <laughs> I know, you're fine, right? I told you it was gonna be just fine. So, if you come in and you're like, I got this, I got you, I'm good, then it allows you to be like, okay, I'm not, I'm not. and then all of a sudden you're like, let me breathe a little bit. And I, I, a lot of times I'll breathe through a few things with people, I'm like they don't even know I'm doing it. I'm just like, ah, they call it, my, my staff calls it the cupcake breathing. They're like, oh my God. My kids call it, they're like, oh geez, mom, are you breathing again? I'm like, mm hmm because we're in a situation here, aren't we? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, even if you do that, I always tell my people before you go to a listing, just, and then I go in, I'm like, oh, we're good. Like, let it, let it go. And, and when you're with people to co-regulate them, it's interesting, you'll see me doing it when they're like that. Because me breathing actually signals to them to do that, to breathe as well, which will regulate them. Yeah, it was really interesting so. to watch you do that with her. I was like, hmm. Yeah. So that was fun. Um, Share with us a little bit about your brokerage because you really do have one of the most unique setups that I've ever seen. I've been at this for a little while and uh, love comes to mind when I when I look at your brokerage. Even your logo, I think now is a giant pink heart. Yeah. So how did you get to that point in the business where you went from professional to this place of love? Well, I think that love is professional because if we're all looking at this, love is really all the, at the end of the day, if you, there's a lot of exercise you can do and it all ends with love. I don't care what you are, what we're on this, we are on this earth for love. So my, my sign is, it's not my logo, but my sign is a heart, which I changed, which I don't know if you guys have seen it, but it's actually very cool. It's like a big heart instead of a square sign, or you know, the square sign that everyone has. Um, we do have some regular signs too, but if people don't like them, but actually everyone loves the heart signs. <laughs> so, um, I think that like for us in our brokerage, it's like a work family, right? So there's about 50 of us now, we're growing, we're gonna get to about 60. Um, but it's like we care about each other because it's it's the human experience of what you're going through when you go through it. And if you don't have that, then why are we here anyway? You know, I remember when I started, and this is nothing against Remax because it was a great spot for me to start, but everyone was sitting there competing against each other. <laughs> and everybody was like, doggy, doggo. Don't tell me that I'll it. And like, oh my God, like, I don't want to live my life like that, like at all, you know? So we just like, we all meet, we meet up once a week, we go on trips together, we have game nights together, like, and we have a lot of fun together, but we also live in the human experience. I've sent like, actually you're going to, um, I've sent a lot of people to Hoffman. I like, I, I sit down with people and I go, like, instead of like planning their year, a lot of times I'll be like, let's actually help plan your life. <laughs> Because if they're not regulated, they're not going to sell, and I know that going in. So I help them get to that place, and then once we do that, like once we're together, like they, I mean, my my people are pretty much with me for a very like forever. How actually. has Sam been with you? It's been she's been with me nineteen. I've been in business twenty years and nineteen years. Yeah, Sam, Carrie, I mean, all of them, Katie. I mean, everyone is like they're like family. They're really like family, but. 
And the great thing is, is all my ICs are like that too. And then they all get along too, instead of being like, oh, it's this, it's this. It's like, there's plenty for everyone. And the more that we can create together, the bigger we're gonna get together. Well, prime example, I had a listing that I upset the seller. You know, I was brutally honest and it didn't go well. And I called Tammy or I texted you. And I'm like, here's the address, here's the name, here's the situation, go for it. I knew I wasn't going to get it, so I wanted you to get it. And I think three months later, four months later, they called her and listed it with her. So, and here comes a referral fee. It's like, thank you. So that's what collaboration looks like and what it's about. And that's the one thing I keep wanting to stress for today. And actually, that's what I, I'm I had a really good. Right, so. <laughs> oh, no, I, I, um, I actually, I, I talked to my team about this yesterday. I think that the one of the most important things right now in the market, we're looking at the market right now, is what you're saying is collaborating. I can't tell you how important it is. I, I was saying to all of my agents, I said, do not go on the listing alone because here's the thing. If you don't have the experience, you're not going to get that listing. So, you know, call Vivian, call me, call any, call somebody that has done it and co-list that property with them because they will take you through it and you will get it because half of something is less, is a lot better than none of it. And what I'm finding right now, I don't think we've lost a listing since December, actually, that we've gone on a listing appointment. Um, I oh, actually, two. no, oh, right. You got it. I got it. Oh, well, they had right. four. Yeah, that's so right. we got we got other one. That was yeah. the best day of my career. Not that part. And you know, not. I'm not saying that. I'm walking into a listing appointment, and I see Tammy walking out, and was literally was like, "Great, this <laughs> <laughs> is not going to go well for me." But, um, but yeah, I love. But I think you're getting it back. No, you got it. I got three others of his, but all yeah. over the place. Yeah. He had four listings. Yeah. So it's all good. It's clearly it's all good. between here, but, but no, the point no, is, no, but it, you have to collaborate. Yeah, and the thing is, is that, like for instance, I was just talking to my team on timing, on different situations where you're in timing strategy, and if you're new in the business, you don't you don't have 20 years of experience going. This street doesn't sell at that time of day, like or of the year. Sorry, and that's not when you list this. That's when you list this, and all of those things make a difference. Also. When the shit hits the fan, which it has been doing quite often lately, having a very calm presence and like, hey, we're gonna get through this, let everything calm down, it takes two weeks. America, California is resilient, it always has been, and we're a very active, fluid marketplace. But you have to say that knowing it and through, like we, we do a lot of data in our, mm -hmm. you know that, and we show a lot of data for that. So that's, um, I, I, I highly, collaboration is, is key. Working with people that are amazing. I see Devin in, in this room that are amazing. So um, I think that's, yeah, end on that. Yeah, well thank you. We're ending and um, if you have a listing appointment that you're a little bit nervous about, take her with you. She'll get it. <laughs> <laughs> thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much.